Thank you very much for that very kind introduction. Um, I'm also somewhat less charitably known as the Grumpy Scott. And if anyone's interested in my symbology here, when I Googled Grumpy Scott, this was the least cat-like picture I could find on Google Images. So here we, here we have it here. And this sort of Grumpy Scott thing comes about because I, when I first entered the field of gratitude research, which is just after Bob, I was really, really skeptical. And I didn't believe that gratitude was going to be a strong, unique predictor of well-being. And um, because of that, I approached the research I subsequently did exactly as one should approach science, which is trying to disprove the hypothesis. Science doesn't advance by proving hypothesis, it advances by failing to disprove a hypothesis and building up more evidence for it as a result. And first off, I thought that gratitude was gonna be nothing but social support rebadged. So I had a longitudinal study controlling for social support and gratitude remained important. So I thought, oh, it must just be coping rebadged. So if I control for coping, the relationship with gratitude and well-being will go away, and it didn't. And I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna have to cheat a bit now. I'm gonna throw the 30 personality traits um, of the NEO that represent all of personality that's mainly studied in psychology to date, and surely gratitude won't predict beyond that. And it did. So rather reluctantly, I've had to come to accept that gratitude is really important to well-being. But what's critical in that story is that the reason I think my work has been influential and convincing is because it is coming from a skeptical core and really trying to disprove a hypothesis. And really what I thought about when I was asked to talk about um, challenges to gratitude research, I think the key challenge is that we don't proceed with that skepticism. And if we don't proceed with that skepticism, if we start trying to prove gratitude matters, or just apply it, divorced from the evidence, then we're no longer doing science, and that will no longer be convincing to the communities we have who believe in science. So really what I'm gonna say is we need um, to address that challenge by looking not just at the positive side of gratitude, but also when is gratitude negative? Because there is no such thing that is good for everyone at all times in all settings. And listening sometimes to people talking about gratitude, it's as if they're positioning it as it is. And that's going to come back and bite the field in due course. So in answering, is gratitude good? Well, I'm going to um, rephrase this as, is gratitude a virtue? Which is something that people often say. And then the question becomes, what is virtue? Well, one of the earliest surviving and still most authoritative treatments of virtues was presented by Aristotle in his Nicomachean Ethics. And he said virtue referred to a characteristic which is accepted as culturally excellent, possibly including gratitude, but that virtue is the situationally appropriate midpoint for two equally as non-virtuous or vicious extremes. So for example, bravery moves from a continuum from cowardice to situationally appropriate displays through to foolhardiness. There's no such thing as more bravery is good, rather bravery is the appropriate application of this characteristic. Similarly, modesty raises from brazenness to situationally appropriate displays to self-effacement, a characteristic where you have too much of it or inappropriately application of it is bad in the Aristotelian model, is not virtuous. And many people and cultures do not think that gratitude is good or virtuous. And whilst we have quotes from people like Chesterton saying that gratitude is really good, we equally have this quote from Stalin that gratitude is an illness suffered by dogs. And when I Googled, not looking for images anymore, when I Googled Stalin and dog, instead of getting the quote I was looking for, I got a picture of Stalin as a dog. So this was what made me decide to run with my dog motif here. But I think really we've got to take both of these quotes um, seriously. And Stalin was an evil man, but was a very effective man on his own terms. So he kind of knows what he's talking about. And what he's talking about is that as a dictator, gratitude was something that he used in order to be able to exploit people more effectively. 
And I think if we take the Aristotelian model, both of those quotes can be right if Stalin's referring to too much and misplaced gratitude and Chesterton's talking about the, mag the, the appropriate midpoint in any given situation. Whilst we're on the subject, who's this? It's also from the pups, thank you, it's Fidel Castro, also from the pups that look like dictator's website. I just love this one, I thought I would share him with you. But if gratitude is this situationally appropriate midpoint between two equally bad extremes, then we have really quite a big challenge in front of us, which is that quite often in the field of gratitude research, it's taken the view that more gratitude is good. And by the way, you don't, if, if you can't follow the text on this slide, which is very slow, that's fine. I'm happy to give copies of this slide afterwards, but I'm saying basically all you need to know. Um, so, more gratitude is good, but only for people who are below the situationally appropriate midpoint of gratitude. For those above this point, gratitude theoretically becomes bad. Now, in a sense, this hasn't really been problematic to the field so far, because, and we get these robust correlations between gratitude and well-being, is because globally, most people's problem is not that they're too high on gratitude, it's that they're too low on gratitude, and this too high on gratitude doesn't occur that often. But it's a huge problem for gratitude as a research area, because there are many, many people out there who don't believe gratitude is a desirable thing. And what these people can do is immediately throw back to you reasons, even if they're minority reasons, why gratitude might be bad. And if the field of gratitude research does not investigate the construct holistically, then it's got no real reply to those challenges and it's got no evidence base on which to draw. And I point out, and I've got to point out because I'm, I'm in California now where gratitude is very um, culturally valued and identified with, in many cultures it really, really isn't. In the UK you say you're doing gratitude research and that gets a uh, reaction. It's sort of considered a sort of new age or new age kind of, um, kind of construct and there's a lot of suspicion around it. So very readily, you're gonna get these challenges and until we as a field engage with looking in more holistically, including the negative side, we're not really going to be able to convince those kind of people. Gratitude research has so far done well of convincing everyone who wants to be convinced those who don't want to be convinced, we're not having that dialogue and that's partly because we can't address the challenges of when is gratitude not good. And particularly if we are grateful people um, kind of dispositionally, which possibly I'm not, but if we are, then really we need to make extra effort to step outside of ourselves and give ourselves that healthy um, scientific skepticism. So if we really want to start um, engaging and continue to engage in gratitude as scientists and not purely promoters, we should ask, well, where can we start to look at when gratitude may be bad? And I have, a few, um, I have a few answers, philosophical, psychological, and applied. In the philosophical terms, there was a recent wonderful Templeton-sponsored gratitude conference in Birmingham, UK, and there was a group of philosophers, most of which did not think gratitude was a good thing by default, and they came up with all of these challenges. Um, there was the first challenge that actually called, thank you for letting me pee, which is based on real stories of highly abused people who feel grateful to their captors on the rare occasion they're less abusive. There was the non-identity problem highlighted by Saul uh, Saminsky, that in order for us to be here now, every event in history has to happen. So if we say we're grateful for our existence, are we by logical extension saying we're grateful for every atrocity that has happened throughout history? The slave foreman problem, where a slave is kindly treated and feels gratitude towards that captor for treating him better than the other slave captors treated them, 
He didn't have to be kind, but your entire situation is being kept going by that person, should one feel gratitude. I'm not saying these are terminal problems for gratitude research, but I'm saying that they're things we have to engage with seriously, or any one of these, um, these complaints can possibly cut us dead. Psychologically, there's virtually no work. You saw Bob's great graph earlier of how the um, citations to gratitude, and number of gratitude papers is increasing massively, but they're all on the good side of gratitude. I've looked quite hard, and really, the only thing I could really come up with was this interesting doctoral dissertation that's the only real thing to have looked meaningfully at when gratitude is bad, and it involved giving people gratitude induction and then asking them to persist in a task that was inherently abusive. They were asked, rather not kindly, fill out this questionnaire again, and you filled it out carefully, and the scrum put it in the bin and said, fill it out again. And the people who had the graduate induction continued putting up with that for longer. So really, we've got to start asking, what are the kind of co-occurring appraisals or situations that make state gratitude unhelpful? When are there non-linear relationships, such as gratitude is good up and to a point, and then it becomes problematic? And in what kind of situations does trait and state or state gratitude interact with the situation itself to make the experience worse. As an analogy from other work we've done, being conscientious was considered the good boy of um, psychological research, conscientious, better jobs, happier, everything else. We showed that if you become unemployed, if you're more conscientious, you suffer more. So there's one specific situation where it reverses. What are the situations that causes gratitude to research? And the applied sense. Now, gratitude interventions work really quite well. When don't they? For whom don't they? Gratitude, like any intervention, has a wide range of responses. Whilst most people may genuinely, generally get better, you can point to people on a graph and say these people got worse. Who are these people? Is this simple errors in measurement? Is it due to underlying flux fluctuation in their conditions that have nothing to do with the gratitude therapy? Or is it something about the intervention itself that for that individual or that individual in that situation was not helpful? We don't know, we need to look at this. People often say to me, but aren't gratitude interventions simply making people less realistic about life? You would not believe how often I get this in the UK. And I've got no response. It is my belief that um, gratitude doesn't stop people seeing the negative, but encourages them to see the world more holistically, balancing still seeing the negative, but also seeing the positive. That's just my belief. I've got no evidence for this. That's the kind of evidence we need to meaningfully look for. And are there some ways in which gratitude interventions themselves are presented that have the mere telling people that they should be grateful, or you'd be better off if they're grateful, makes them feel worse if they are not grateful? Barbara Held has done some fantastic work arguing it's more difficult to be unhappy in the US than it is in other, in other countries, because in the US, not only do you feel unhappy, you're told you're a freak for not feeling happy. We know statistically there are a greater number of suicides paradoxically in happier countries. Is that because your given level of unhappiness becomes totally intolerable? And so on. Um, so is there an entire issue there with promoting gratitude research? And how might gratitude interventions already be maliciously used? Marketers have managed to grab on every positive there is in the world and every positive characteristic and emotion and somehow use it to sell products. It would seem to me amazing if they were not doing that on some level with gratitude. Do companies make you feel grateful to them? Have you more brand loyalty? Have you, in the words of our earlier speaker, buying more crap that you're not going to um, want on your deathbed? Is it already being used in that way? Um, so it is not, and I really want to end, end with this, that it's not my intention to be critical of gratitude, nor the field of gratitude research which I helped create. Indeed, since starting researching this, almost against my expectations, my data has shown for most people, more of the t um, for most people, most of the time, more gratitude would be good, including, perhaps especially, me personally. <laughs> but as scientists, we need to look at, look at everything we study with skepticism and in a holistic manner. And we need to start trying to not just look at the good of gratitude, 
but understand for when and for whom it is good and for when and whom it is bad, what I'm thinking of as gratitude with discernment. And if we can see this, we can then um, not only have a more scientific approach to the subject, but we're actually more able to have reasoned discussions with people who are d d dismissive from the go as to whether gratitude is valuable, full stop. And I'm hoping that I'm offering a way forward in which to allow gratitude research to remain or become scientific and skeptical, which will make it a stronger um, research um, in the end. And uh, finally, I would like to say genuine gratitude to the greater good um, and people and the kind organizers of this conference for giving me this space in which to speak. And because they know me of old and given me the space to speak this particular message and in doing so encourage this exact kind of debate. So I'd like to finish off by saying thank you, possibly. <laughs>